Hello, family, and welcome back to Amplify You. Today, Michelle and I have a friend on who is a educator and trainer on how to build relationships both online and offline and to turn those relationships and connections into new business. Here to tell us how we can use our podcast and network with our potential clients and turn it into business. Welcome to the show, Janice Porter. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here with both of you. Well, thanks for being on, Janice. I'm super excited to have you on. I've known you for, we're going on probably seven or eight years now. And I think that um, you are definitely a model of what you teach and train because um, we have built a relationship over the last seven or eight years in many different capacities. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show you that, you know, this is exactly how you build relationships properly in order to do business together. Now we be, didn't do business together right out of the gates, um, but we built a relationship and I turned to you to um, help me with my wedding invitations and cards because I knew that was something that you were doing based on our relationship. And then later now in life, we are helping you coach you through getting your podcast going. And there we are again. So, you know, exactly. and now you're going to help us with our LinkedIn profiles that apparently are so good <laughs> <laughs> right after that. So um, I'm super excited to have you on today, just kind of like, you know, to kind of take us through what it means to build a relationship, how we can do that as podcasters when we don't know who our audience is necessarily. And uh, I'm really excited to ask, dive in and ask you some questions. And, and me too. So shoot, fire away. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I have a first question for you. Um, when we are first meeting someone, what is, what is really the real proper way of um, building an authentic relationship with someone that is meant for like, you know, and maybe at a networking event, let's put it in context. So we're meeting at a networking event. So thank, that's a good question because it's, it's one that is, um, not really thought about by a lot of people when you go to a networking event. And when I teach people how to network properly, um, effectively, I should say, at network events, it actually starts before the event. So it's important to do your homework and think, okay, uh, there's, there's a few key people I need to meet today and know who they are. Number one, if there's a speaker, make sure that you get a chance to introduce yourself to the speaker. The person who organized the event, they will know everybody there or at least have um, be able to introduce you to anybody who's there. So maybe you go with the idea that I've heard that so-and-so is coming and I really want to meet them, but I don't know what they look like. So speak to the organizer and ask, can you point so-and-so out to me so that you know who they are? Um, do your homework so that when you get to the event, you are ready for um, meeting the right people. Because not everybody at the event is going to be someone that you need to meet or want to meet. So when you do meet one of those people, have a couple of questions in mind that you want to ask them. You know, do you, um, what brought you here today? Or uh, is this the kind of networking you do on a regular basis? Or um, is there a uh, find look for a, um, a common ground. Okay. So if you've done your homework on the person you want to meet, then you know what kind of question you want to ask them. If you haven't, then just get them talking because the whole idea is for you to find out enough about them to show interest in something. That's how you, um, that's how you start the relationship by building rapport. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that. And it's interesting thinking about uh, checking, reaching out to the organizer and uh, the speaker. That's something that's, all, I think you're right. A lot of people probably don't even think about that. And there's one more person that you need to meet at the event. And that is the person who is the hub, the person who's the connector, the person who knows everybody. Right, right. So, because yeah, I don't with me. That would be me. <laughs> that would be me, right? Yeah, like, you want to meet me because I know a lot of people. And so, if you build that reputation, then people will say, "Hey, you need to meet Janice because she'll probably know someone." Yeah. Okay. That's great. I love it. So, Janice, you were in a group of individuals learning about launching a podcast, and we did these courses on Zoom. So we've been connecting with everybody online. And you're in a group of maybe 10 people. Mm -hmm. Of those 10 people, I've only ever met one in person. 
but we've been working together for three to four months now mm -hmm. and we've had this continuous conversation over internet chat and mm -hmm. this video chat how is that different what different strategies would you employ to build relationships with these people that you're only meeting through your computer you know that's a great question however I was thinking about that when I um, did an interview this morning with one of the people that has actually that was in that group and I was realizing that I felt so comfortable with him I felt like I knew him even though we haven't met mm -hmm. so I don't think it is different I think that you can build that same rapport through video chat um, that you can in person I think it all depends again going back to showing an interest in them paying attention to who they are and what their business is about and looking for a way you can serve because that's what brings you together right opportunities yeah. to serve i love that now you um you mentioned that group and i and i want to if i could just mention something about it because i took that group as an opportunity mm -hmm. so there are there were maybe five people that I think were ever on a call at the same time. So uh, two of them I've now interviewed for my podcast. One more I'm about to interview in a week or so. And one of those people has introduced me to somebody else that I'm going to interview on my podcast. So what I'm saying is that I took the time and effort to connect with those people that I felt connected to through our video chats to deepen that relationship to find out more about them. I had a fabulous call with um, one of the women um, uh, last week, uh, uh, Kirsten, and we know a lot of people, have a lot of people in common. She's just introduced me to somebody else that would be a good person for me to interview on my podcast. So I've been networking behind the scenes with all of those people mm -hmm. and it has broadened my, um, my networking, right? My networking base. So whether you meet them in person or you meet them online, you have to reach out. You have to make those things happen. Mm -hmm. See, I get excited about that. Speaking of reaching out, do you do, do, when you do reach out, do you do it with, like as in service, like, hey, do you try to connect them to someone you know first or how does that reaching out look like? No, um, good question. For me, it usually takes the, the um, it's either, could we have a, like from a, a message in the group or a private message, I'll connect with them on Facebook or LinkedIn, wherever they, they are. And then I will go to a private message or if I have their, I think in the case of this group, I had everybody's email address as well. And I reach out to see if I can book a phone conversation and I use or phone or zoom, whatever feels better for them. And so I have an initial conversation just to get to know each other. That's it. Period. No selling, no buying, no anything. Just, I want to know, you know, what's your take on the podcasting? How are you moving forward? That's our, that's our common bond. In this yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, that's what I do. So like a virtual coffee date, you're saying. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know that I'm a LinkedIn trainer, and um, one of the things that I do when somebody reaches out to me on LinkedIn to connect, if I decide that they are um, someone I want to connect with and I accept their connection request, I always start with a thank you message that says, thanks for reaching out to connect. I like to make my connections real by having a conversation, would you be open to that? Yeah. Cool. yeah. It's a call to action on building a relationship. You know, that is the same. Yes, absolutely. And what that is, is, I don't know, there's two things that I, that I kind of um, uh, harp on, I guess. One is never leave a meeting without booking the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And secondly, always follow up with people. So you, you have to take control and you have to move the relationship forward because you know what, generally speaking, nobody else will. Totally. There's a podcast out there, Jordan Harbinger show. His, his um, big message is to develop relationships before you need them. So you develop your allies, you, you over people, you give yeah. them, from your own help so that 
if and when you ever need their services, they're more than inclined to, to feel like they can support you. And Absolutely. I think that, that's amazing. Absolutely. So that works when you told me that, um, not in this conversation, but you told me that you have um, a, an article of value about podcasting uh, that you have online that people can go and download. Mm -hmm. That's an article of that. That's something of value that you can actually use in an intro email to someone or a thank you email. You know, you can say, uh, you know, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, I look forward to getting to know you better. Uh, if by any chance you're interested in podcasting, here's something that we've put together or that I put together that may be of interest for you to think about it a little further. So you send that article to them instead of making them go and sign up for your newsletter or whatever. Right. Just because, you know, that's the start of a conversation, you know, um, I, I find myself often when I'm typing an email or a message to someone on uh, a social media platform in to start, you know, the, the relationship, I start to say something about my business or how I can help them. And then I usually end up erasing it mm -hmm. because it's too soon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to just show them that you're interested in them. Oh, and I see, I noticed that you just were at such and such a place, you know, on Facebook or whatever. Tell me more about that. Just always ask questions, always um, give them an opportunity to reply. I love that. You know, and it's, uh, you know, it's not always a relating um, business relationships to dating, right? Where you don't want to propose on the first date. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's a good, it's always a good analogy to keep in mind when you're thinking about doing something in business. Um, like all these people that friend you on Facebook messenger and then like we'll call you and I'm like no 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 I'm like I don't even know you I'm like let's talk first <laughs> first and then and then and then at, then like if I agree to the call then yeah cool or like you know I don't want to hear about like what special you have on this week before I even know your name right like yeah, exactly. I think that's the wrong way of going about it I just so. want to help those people so much but yeah. they're not ready to be helped yet yeah yeah I mean, I think it's success. There is a very successful way to take a business relationship from online to in person and making it a real, authentic relationship. And I think you just shared that with us perfectly. So we have clients that have been podcasting for just short periods of time, a few months, mm -hmm. and they are watching their network grow exponentially. They have clients contacting them from uh, Europe, out Africa. Australia, wow. all over North America. And so their network is growing just because they're broadcasting their message and putting it out there. What do you recommend they do to capture those clients and their information so that they can continue to grow those relationships? So let me just be clear on, so someone's listened to their podcast, say on iTunes, mm -hmm. and has done what? Has sent them a message or has posted a, uh, a review or, or reached out to them privately? Reached out to them privately, usually. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, by, by email, perhaps? Or, or messenger. Yeah. Or messenger. Direct message on Instagram, too, right? Okay. okay. Not my favorite place to hang out, so I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Anyway, um, I suggest that the same, the same types of things um, – are relevant here it's about you know saying thank you appreciating that they've reached out um, perhaps they've asked a question perhaps they want to do some work with me or not I don't know at that point so I would then turn it back and ask them is there something I can do to support you or how can I best support you or what is it you liked about the podcast that had you connect with me find some way to start a conversation with them does that make sense absolutely I think one of the strategies that they use is they ask clients or they ask these people that are approaching them certain questions before connecting back with them. So the questions give them an insight as to what they can services they can provide or how they can be of service or even what their next podcast episode can be about because it gives a little insight into what these, this individual is hoping to hear next. Okay. So are you saying that um, there's like a pop-up 
with certain fields that come up before they'll answer the message? So what this uh, podcaster does is they invite their listeners to join their Facebook community. And Facebook communities can have an application process where answer these questions to join the community. And so they answer these questions, they get the answers, and then they then know what people want to hear. Yeah. See, I'm not sure that that sits right with me. To be honest, I mean, I know it's done and it's done a lot and it's a more um, automated way to build their community. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with that because I want to connect with the person. And if they come into my community, I don't necessarily connect with them. Mm -hmm. right. So I you want to connect with them first yes. on one-on-one -on -one and yes. then invite them to the community. But again, I, you know, I'm not yeah. in the business of you know, hundreds and thousands of people because I, it's, I'm getting too old for that. Number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, I can't connect, you know, uh, with that many people, obviously okay. in a short amount of time. Uh, that also makes me think though, that, uh, I have to build that. I have to be constantly in that Facebook, um, group to make that happen. So I don't know. I just, I get it, mm -hmm. but I don't feel that you are interested in or that if that were me i would as the person sending the message i wouldn't feel as though they were really interested in in me they just want to add me to their numbers right yeah, that makes sense i can see that for sure um so as for business owners uh who are thinking about podcasting what would be a good strategy for a business owner do you think? for a business owner to have a podcast yeah Probably, I mean, it depends on what type of business they have, whether it's mm -hmm. service business or whether it's, um, you know, brick and mortar kind of business. But, you know, interesting, now that I think about it, when you ask that, so I had a client that was a LinkedIn client. He's a, he's an engineer. Okay. And he has a very successful engineering company and he deals in like very unsexy things like air conditioning and and uh, heating systems and so on and he's in the states and um one of the things he shared with me and he's an introvert and so we talked we've talked about introvert versus extrovert things he is very much an introvert and he's trying to transition i think he's bored and he's probably ready to um allow other people to run that very successful business and he wants to get into consulting and he wants to uh, be a little bit entrepreneurial. So he was starting a podcast. And so um, this podcast um, I think was, and he hasn't gotten it off the ground yet. I don't think completely, but he was working with someone and said that, you know, he was interviewing and showing his expertise in the field that he's in. So where's his audience? I don't know. Like it's going to be interesting to see. But um, certainly if someone has a business like that, it's showing their expertise that is important, right? But it's doing it in it. They have to find that fine line between the, you know, the technical side of it and making it conversational and showing the, the expertise that he has in a conversational way. Right? That's going to be the challenge for him. So I don't know if I answered your question, but it made me think of, of John and, and what he's doing. So you want, it might be a completely different format to what you and I know as, or what I know as a podcast. I don't know. There's different ways to skin a cat, I guess. But you want to show your expertise. You want to be able to share your knowledge with other people, but you want to do it in a way that um, will attract more business to you. Right. So do you have some tips for people as podcasters on how to do that? And I mean, I think being authentic and being real is probably the number one thing. Just be yourself. Um, do you have any other tips for how we can like come across as being, you know, um, yeah, just some tips for people to build authentic relationships through our podcast. So if they're doing an interview podcast, mm -hmm. um, uh, type of uh, an interview uh what's the word uh they're interviewing people yeah and um then i think it's really important to uh 
to show the human side of the people that they're interviewing. So ask curious curiosity questions about them, what made them tick, what made them excited about their business. Mm -hmm. um, I was sharing with somebody today that you have to be a good listener and to listen properly. Do you know what the anagram of the word listen is? No. Silent. Take those same letters and mix them around and you get the word silent. I didn't know that for a long time. It's like, working, it's like when I'm working with the kids or remind them they have one mouth and two ears, so they should listen twice as much as they talk. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's a good that's idea. Great. Yeah, that's great. So the words listen is also the word silent. So be quiet and let them talk and and you know, guide the conversation, certainly where you want it to go, but um, listen properly or effectively, um, actively, so you can continue by asking questions um, ongoing from that. And then have some, um, uh, whim some whimsy, be whimsical at some point, go completely off the topic and so that you can get deeper into who that person is. So like for example, I didn't ask you this. I should, this is now, see, I've just had another aha moment. Like what's your favorite movie or of all times or, you know, something that's completely off topic. Yeah. I love that. Add some whimsy might be some of the best advice we've had on our podcast so far. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's a number of people that we work with who their show, they watch their show numbers and the more far out left field, whimsical, spiritual, woo-woo that they get in their episode, the more <laughs> downloads they get. It's something about podcasting where the more niche or unique your topic is, the more interest it gets. So to not be a generalist, but to specialize. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so I need to ask you a question now. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but it, it, it's, it's relevant because, um, and you can table it if you want, but how do you um, get that uh, niche audience? Is it because you had it in the first place or is it the, uh, the wonderful promotion that you do or you teach people to do about their podcasting? Well, I would say, Michelle might have a different answer, but I would say that in podcasting, you are broadcasting yourself. You're putting a, a signal out there to the world. The people that are interested in what that signal says and, and what you are, are gonna be drawn to that. So you have an audience, when you first start a podcast, your audience is going to be your close knit social network because you're sharing with people on social media that you have a show. Okay. The people that are interested in what you're saying are going to share that with people that they think are interested in that topic. That is going to grow and spread of spread through word of mouth and referral till the people that need and want to hear what your message is will be finding it. Now that might sound like a, hope and a prayer, but I believe that it does have a grassroots uh, wildfire burn, slow burn feel to it as well. Which you just gave me another idea. So when my podcast is finally launched mm -hmm. soon, um, I'm going to put my podcast info on the back of some greeting cards that I send out. Mm -hmm. So that will also spread the word. Um, to the people I know. Yeah, I love it. I think that's a great idea too. And I want to go back to LinkedIn for a second too. Like, so for podcasters, what would be a good strategy for us to use uh, for LinkedIn? Well, great question. So I'll just preface by saying the very first thing one must do in business is have a fully optimized LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Which you're going to help us with soon. <laughs> right. okay. so that's the first thing. It's so like both of ours are garbage. <laughs> that's okay. So, so that's the first thing. Then if your audience, if your prospects, if your referral partners are on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. then we look at the strategy for 
uh, outreach as well as inbound, right? Um, to grow your um, connections on LinkedIn. Now, podcasts, your podcast can be, um, links to your podcast can be put on, uh, on LinkedIn in certain ways. And I'll give you one example. On my LinkedIn profile, below my summary, I have um, a video that's on my website that someone did for me. And I have, because you can put video on, uh, on your profile and you can put podcasts. So I have a podcast on there that I was interviewed, I don't know, three years ago by this guy who was doing um, baby boomer businesses or something. And uh, he's out of the Midwest in the States. And he reached out to me and connected with me on LinkedIn. We've had a conversation on the phone. Just like I said, I like to talk to people and he does too. And then he asked if I would be interested in being on his podcast. And I said, yes, I'd love that. So I talked about LinkedIn and baby boomer businesses and whatever. And I, I, that was the first podcast I'd ever been interviewed on. And I still have it on my profile because people keep calling me from that podcast. It's on my LinkedIn. They saw it there. They listened to it. And then they wanted to know more about what I do. That's so fantastic. Yeah. That's one thing. And the second thing, which I already mentioned, is that you can, um, when you're connecting and meeting people uh, through LinkedIn, if it feels uh, appropriate, you can sit, you can think, oh, I've got a podcast that I did with so-and-so that they would really enjoy or be interested in or would give them some business tips. I'm going to send them a link to it. So you use it as a value add. You also use it, use your podcast um, as a, um, a uh, news feed post when new ones right. come out. So we right? can do that automatically from Libs and when you publish a podcast, you can automatically syndicate to Libs, uh, LinkedIn, which is amazing. And I love that. And I hadn't thought about the idea of actually listing and linking other episodes that we've been on, like kind of like you would on your media page on your website. So I think that's really smart to link other shows. And this is what I love about freaking podcasts is that you just said it right there. You're still getting calls from a show that you did a long time ago. Um, and it's evergreen. So the more shows that you go on and get out there, the more shows you put your message on to, the more shows that you can and not only just your own, but also be a guest on shows. There's so much value in that. You're going to get people coming back to you for a long time because that stuff's not going anywhere. It's going to be there well, forever. Right. And I think that actually brings up another point that, so I, I was interviewed just recently on a two or three podcasts, actually. Now I'm assuming, and you should never assume, but I'm assuming that they haven't actually um, gone live yet because when they do, or just before they do, when someone has the date for them, that person should be sending me the information so I can now promote it to my people, right? Absolutely. That's one of the best ways to grow your podcast, but it's also one of the best ways to grow your network is being a guest on other shows too. Right. So, um, so I'm hoping that those people realize that that's important, that they send out the information to me so I can promote it for them as well as for me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm exponentially growing your relationships through podcasting and marketing. Yeah. And showing you as a person, your authenticity, where, where your heart is or where your passion is, right? Because they can hear it in your voice. And it's hard to hide. If you're doing a 30 minute episode of you talking and asking questions, things are going to come out authentically. I keep preaching that, but it's pretty hard to hide who you are in a podcast. It is. It's true. I know. And, and that's why I love that. Um, even though sometimes it's a little, um, you know, there's a pregnant pause or something, or I say, um, too many times, which I'm trying to work on. Um, see, I just did it again. Um, it's being okay. Being imperfect. Be, it really is. Right. But what I was going to say is as much as that happens, it's better than being scripted. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And you know, I really, that's something we teach our clients too to do is like not be so scripted. 
and have that authentic conversation and curiosity because when you focus on what's coming next, you're not listening to that. That's right. That's you're right. listening to the person who's talking. Therefore, you cannot have a real authentic conversation with them. And then it just comes off weird in your podcast too. And so by listening to the person and answering questions and being curious, not scripted, and we actually get them to hardly edit anything out of their show because it's just your real authentic. I even, Brain's mad at me about this, but I even was not letting him edit one of our second shows that we ever, ever did. And he um, forgot what he was saying in the middle of the sentence. And I was like, no, we're not editing that out. It's funny. Cause I do that all the time. I forgot what you're saying in the middle of the sentence. <laughs> But we're keeping that in. It shows you're real. <laughs> what what I find is when I get concerned with what I'm saying and how it's going to sound to other people, when I worry about what the audience is going to hear, then I lose complete track of what the point I'm trying to say is. Mm -hmm. So it's all about not worrying what it sounds like, but expressing yourself just naturally and getting the point across. Then people will hear it however they want to hear it. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's true. That's awesome. Jess, I got one more, one more quick question for you before we let you go. Um, you always say relationships rule. And in fact, that's the name of the podcast. So why do relationships rule? Tell us, tell us your golden nugget. Wow. I hadn't thought about that really, except that for me, um, you know how we always say, or you've probably heard before that we do business with people that we know, like, and trust. And in my world, it's also, I teach about, sure, you do business with people you know, like, and trust, but they have to remember you as well. Otherwise, you're gone, and they're moving on to the next, especially in this um, uh, throwaway society that we're in now. So, um, so they, relationships rule for me because I want to do business with people that I trust, and I want authentic uh, referrals and when people know like and trust each other then it's easy to get those referrals and that's how you that's how you build a, a, a business the best way to build a business is through relationship and through referrals so that's why that's why they rule okay and you need to take care of them you need to nurture them and so many times I see people saying well I've got to um, you know uh, I'm looking for people in this industry or that industry and I want to make connections here and I want to make connections there and I'm, I'm like well, what about the 2,000 people you're already connected to how have you connected with them recently you know are you nurturing those relationships because there's you know again one last thing that they say is you know it costs more to get a new client than it does to keep the ones you already have so nurture those relationships it's worth it there that's my answer awesome <laughs> that's beautiful janice thank you so much for sharing the power of relationships and how it can affect our business really appreciate your time and being on the show with us thank you it was my pleasure Thanks, Janice. I look forward to more uh, great bombs coming from you. And we're going to bring you back for your behind the mic interview once your show goes live. Could I just say one more thing? If people want to find me and oh, yes. resonate with anything that I've said, I'd love to have a conversation with them. They can find me at JanicePorter.com or they can connect with me on Facebook or, or LinkedIn and uh, send me a message and let's start the conversation. Awesome. We'll put all those links in the show notes for you. Thank you. Yeah, and when your show goes live, we'll put that link there too. <laughs> awesome. Take care. Thank you, Janice. Thanks, Janice. Thank you.